We're really excited tonight here at Queer News Tonight. We have Carol Moran here, legendary lesbian, <laughs> legendary lesbian wow. that's joining us, uh, one of the big recipients of the upcoming uh, Diversity Honors. Carol, welcome to Queer News Tonight. Thank you. We are so excited to have you here. Of course, the timing is perfect for us because uh, we have a month-long mission to talk about the women in our community. It's National Women's History Month. Um, we always make the joke, um, it allows us to talk about women for 31 days and then we don't talk about them again for the rest of the year. <laughs> that sounds fair. Yeah, it sounds fair. <laughs> no, it's not fair. Uh, Carol, uh, as uh, many, many of our viewers uh, know, and those of you who are meeting Carol for the first time, is the owner of Apartment 9F in Wilton Manors. I've eaten in your restaurant many, many times. It's a fun and quiche kind of uh, casual chic cool. uh, place. I love it. You did good much. on that. Thank you. Uh, she's a community activist and perfect for us to be able to talk about uh, diversity honor. So Carol, welcome to Queerness. Thank Tonight. you. So first, let's, let's, let's talk about Apartment 9F. We are talking at Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network, uh, not only in the South Florida community, really all over the country. Because we're watched in Roku and Apple Television, people all over. Uh, watch and they pay attention to many of the stories that we do in South Florida and so perfect opportunity to talk about Wilton Manors and look at other communities around the country of what's going on. Uh, Apartment 9F is unusual women-owned uh, restaurant uh, right in the heart of the gay meaning boy burhood uh, of Wilton Manors, or it seems like that. Um, uh, what was your inspiration in terms of wanting to have a restaurant and be right there on Wilton Drive? Uh, what was the motivation? The motive, like Wilton Manors is, is my house, really. I, I kind of developed more of who I am there because when I left corporate America, I was living in South Beach and I saw this little article about this kind of up and coming gay area. Yeah, it was and a then, mobile home park when you read about it. Oh right? yeah. <laughs> and then I came out there and I'm like, there's trailer parks here. Yes. This is, That's right. This is gay, right. what? We, and it's our little secret. They're <laughs> not here anymore, America. But once upon a time, Wilton Manors was a big yeah. trailer park. Yes. So I moved there and I thought I was just tired of South Beach. And I moved there and I just really nestled in and and wanted to make a difference and we have to have a viable community that's safe for us. So my first, I opened, I had two lesbian bars before I went into the restaurant business. But I've always- And tell us the names. Uh, Kicks was my Kicks. first bar I owned okay. with Karen Kelly. Okay. And then uh, New Moon was where, uh, right on the end, back then it was the only two-story building on Wilton Drive. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> It's funny. Yeah. Right? So, uh, yeah, and then I opened there in 2005, New Moon. And and um, uh, were there many uh, gay guys in community yet? When oh. you came up, there were a lot. Were you accepted right away or were you an outsider working no, your I was way accepted. In? You were? Yeah, I wasn't in any competition to yeah. any of the bars. Yeah. And we had a very good sense of community. John and Cliff, you know, from Rosie's, they've been there 20 years. They were yeah. my neighbors across the street. Yeah. So we always did communal events together. Yeah. We, we knew we had to build it. Uh, so you got to come to 9F, uh, right on uh, Wilton Drive, right in the heart of uh, uh, Wilton Manors and uh, the business district in Wilton Manors. You're right, uh, almost catty corner uh, across from City Hall and yep. the police department. Anybody gets out of hand, all the police have to do is walk <laughs> yeah, across the street. <laughs> exactly. But nobody ever gets out of hand. Nah. Um, uh, unusual in Wilton Manors from my standpoint, because uh, I've been to so many of uh, the Gaberhoods, and uh, there's three uh, uh, lesbian-owned restaurants uh, uh, on the drive or right adjacent to the drive. Uh, Jean and Vera at La Patio. I just ate at La Patio a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Chef Josie and Marcy at Bubbles and Pearls, and then your place at 9F. Does it surprise you that there's three women's owned restaurants uh, on the drive? No, I mean, there. I don't know if it surprised me that there's that many or that little, you think? Oh, is it l too little? I, I No, I don't, I don't, I would love to see more women-owned businesses. You know, all five of us just happen to be lesbian, which is great, and we're comfortable in that neighborhood. But you know what I mean? I would love to see more of it. 
I just think for me and Walt Manor, it's, it's about being hands on and being in the community. Yeah. And I and I hate to say we're kind of since we're small, we do that. Yeah, um, it's interesting to me because we report at Queer News tonight. Um, uh, lesbian and women's issues are one of our 10 core pillars uh, of our 501c3 media platform. And uh, we report lots of really tough news about what's happening to the lesbian community in America and here in Florida. Uh, we've reported we're down to 26 lesbian bars in America. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, there were uh, two to 300 bars, and today, 26. It seems to be a trend. Uh, what do you think accounts for the visibility of, of the women in our LGBTQ plus? I think it's a couple things. I think the, the more acceptance we got, the less we needed that felt safe space. Mm -hmm. Right. As a younger generation was coming up, they were going to any bar. They didn't feel as threatened, especially here, you know, in, in sort of in Walt Manor. They could go anywhere and not really get hassled. Mm. So that was a plus of our hard work and helping get us accepted in the community. But it then it had a little bit of a negative backlash that women didn't feel like they needed to go to a safe space. Mm -hmm. AKA a lesbian bar. Mm -hmm. I think also social media plays a big part in that. There's a lot of social groups. So people can go and meet other women outside of a bar. But I do think a lesbian bar is viable. I would like to open another one again. I do feel that it has a place. And when people say that women don't support, oh my God, that upsets me. Mm, we do support. That? We do support. There's millionaire lesbians. There's thousand. There's broke lesbians. We're, we're all the spectrum, the we're same everything. as men. Yeah. We're everything. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, in terms of uh, of what has happened at, at Wilton, you've had these these two bars. You've been here in Wilton Manors for a long time, leading voice uh, for uh, the women's community of LGBT in Wilton Manors. Um, does uh, do do the gay guys do a pretty good job? Do you think uh, with women in Wilton Manors, or uh, there's a lot of need for improvement? I think they do do a good job. I don't think there is that such that tightness there was before that it was women only and men only i think it's become more intermixed and more intermingled mm. which is good yeah well and i have to say at 9f virtually without exception when i go to 9f whether it's sitting inside you have great um uh, uh, sidewalk uh, seating in the front i hope well manners continues to embrace that because outdoor dining oh, is is I france let's yeah. be france yes. Yes. in manners yeah yeah um uh, i always notice how many women are there there's a lot but i also notice how many men there are there is a really good mix was that intention or it just happened it's the energy and the vibe and it's uh, hopefully it's the energy and the vibe and i'm in this community this community is everybody yeah yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I want my women to feel safe. I want my men to feel safe. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want everybody to come and be like, okay, this is, this is, I can be me. I can be you. Well, uh, you got to try uh, apartment 9F on uh, Wilton Drive. Let's talk about uh, why you're here uh, in terms of this award. We're going to talk about uh, diversity honors in specific, but let's talk about some of the history. Um, in the 90s, uh, you lost your brother to AIDS. He was 38 years old. Um, uh, you've uh, talked a lot about it. I read a lot about in preparing a conversation with you on diversity honors. I read a lot of what you said. Tell us about what that experience was for. Um, uh, we just did um, a town hall on Women's History Month. And one of the things that jumped off the page for me, which I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know as much about as I should have, is the women that were participating in this town hall that we did talked about how lesbians were front and center in the 90s in the AIDS crisis. They were the nurses. They were the hand holders. They were the support of gay men that were dying of AIDS because nobody would, no one would touch them. And they were afraid yep. of men who had AIDS and that the lesbian community, like um, the Marsha P. Johnsons and the Stonewall movement, yes. lesbians were front and center in the 1990s for the gay community. And I was embarrassed to say I did not know that. Um, what was the experience like uh, of going through AIDS in the 90s and the loss of your, your brother? So in the 90s, I lost quite a few people to AIDS and I didn't expect to lose my brother. I mean, obviously he was gay and he had HIV, but he was HIV for a lot of years and it just took its toll and it made me realize like there's no, there's, there's no real research. There's no real 
forefront of this going on. I mean, it took Ronald Reagan, I don't know, 100,000 deaths later to even say it. Mm -hmm. So when he died, it was such an impactful thing. I was working corporate America. It was time for me to get out. That's how I met my wife. You know, I just figured like, it's time for me to make a change. One, life is short. Two, I need to make a change for myself. AIDS helped you realize life is short. Absolutely. Yeah. When your brother dies at 38, you're like, yeah. that's an awakening. Yeah. And, and it made me realize like, our community needs help. We need to get out there and rock some cages and yeah. kick some people around, some get them moving. Act up as Larry Kramer. Yeah, uh, get it moving. Exactly right. Uh, would it shock you how many uh, young um, LGBT, but specifically gay men, let's say under 30, don't even know what act up is? Never heard the name Larry Kramer? It, no. It wouldn't surprise you. Nope. Yeah. We live in a very immediate, socially front forward. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's a perfect transition. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this uh, this act up uh, kind of personality of what happened to you in the 90s and, and the loss of your brother, you start to get into an activism kind of mode. And then I'm reading about, and I, I told you before uh, we sat down, uh, something that I had never heard of before. I had never heard this word uh, here in uh, South Florida. You were instrumental in launching the Gay and Lesbian Community Center of South Florida. Wait, what the hell is that? I've never heard of that before. Oh, wait, that's the Pride Center of Equality Park. Now I've heard it. And you were uh, instrumental in the capital campaign of creating Community Center. Tell me about that experience. So the Community Center, everybody thinks, oh yeah, I remember that was on Andrews. It started off long before that. It started off in Alan Schubert's garage. It was his kind of birth baby. It was his idea. Um, oh, we're gonna come back to Alan Schubert in a minute. Okay. But, uh, um, so when I got on board, uh, it was at the Apex Center, right on Dixie and Federal, on the third floor. We were teeny tiny. Did a capital campaign with J.J. Schmidt, Karen Kelly, myself, Jim Kaveya, Maria Kondracki, uh, Jay Hyder. These are all really instrumental big people. Naomi Parker um, in the community, Dean Trensalis, Rob Botterford. Oh, my God, these people were shaker movers. They, they laid the foundation that we all, they laid the pavement we walk on yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So we did that capital campaign. We were able to buy the building on Andrews. And then with that, with Tramble, the uh, development company, the building company, we were able to leverage and buy that. They bought the land next door. We were supposed to move over there. And ultimately the sell of that building is what helped Pride Center be where it is. You know, an, an amazing story. That first implementation on the second or the third floor that you're talking about on Oakland, Oakland Park, what year was that approximately? Oh, we're gonna go 90. Eight. Okay. 99. So it's just like, geez, are you feeling old, by the way? I am. <laughs> Me listening to it, I'm feeling old. So so this starts and you are, uh, I understand you were the board chairman of this capital campaign program. Yeah, I was a vice president and the president during two of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, would it shock, okay, so it starts there on Oakland and then a move of growth, then a purchase of property on Aaron, uh, on Andrews, which ultimately to the campus at Pride Center at Equality Park. Do you think it would surprise most of um, the, especially the, the men, the gay men of Walton Manors? Um, you know, our city commissioners, our mayor has been made, uh, is, uh, has been gay, Dean Trentellis is gay on Walton Drive. Do you think it would surprise most um, of the gay men that are on Walton Drive tonight that uh, Pride Center at Equality Park started with a board chairman that was a lesbian? Do you think that would surprise them? I hope it wouldn't. I think it would. I think it would <laughs> I was going to be hopeful and say <laughs> yeah. no, but yeah. yeah, I think it would surprise them. Yeah, and why do you think it would surprise them? And it wasn't them? just, I mean, before that, there was men on the board. Karen Kelly was the first. I think Karen Kelly was the first female president, then I was second, Yeah, as, as much as I have to throw her accolades. So I, I, I think... They would be surprised. Yeah. Please, we had an executive director at one point. It says you don't go to the hardware store for milk, so don't ask lesbians for money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh my. <laughs> Said goodness. it to me. Oh my. Oh, oh my, my goodness. What yeah. did you? What was your response? He's to that? still alive. He's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, leave. Carol just told me leave it at that, Al. Leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, so we move off Andrews and, and the property is bought at, at Pride Center. Let's talk about Pride Center at Equality Park. 
I tell friends, I've traveled all over the world, 147 countries. Gosh, uh, that's awesome. And, and I tell people, gosh, you really should pay attention to what's going on in Walton Manors. Pride Center and Equality Park is, is a standard bearer of community center for an LGBTQ community. And, and while it's in Walton Manors, really for all of South Florida, Pride Center is a, is a leader uh, in terms of community. Tell, for people who have never been on the cance- campus of Pride Center at Equality Park, just describe what goes on there, how it works. Uh, oh, I, to me, I think it's like the kitchen sink of, or the kitchen of the, of the community. You, you kind of go there, you start there. You have a house party, everybody ends up in the kitchen, you know? So Pride Center to me, and that whole campus is just all encompassing. You have the older generation that is being housing. There's there's no reason that we should have to go back in the closet as elderly when we have to go into nursing homes or things like that. So that was a very important part that those guys tackled and took on. Um, with free HIV testing, uh, social groups. Trans-inclusive. Trans-inclusive. Hosted there. Uh, absolutely, you know what I mean? We did the uh, Bishop SF Mahi Awards, Pride Center is instrumental in that. So it's all encompassing. So I, I think that when you get on that campus and you kind of see what they've done and what we've done, what the community is doing and supporting, it, it's it's pretty cool. Carol, it's pretty I cool. have to say, all right, so you're in South Beach and you're uh, the L in our acronym. You decide, oh, there's this crazy little trailer park up in central uh, Broward County uh, yeah. that you're going to move to. And you start this activism and, and this development. You invest your time and your effort and your own money in a business structure uh, in Wilton Manors and on Wilton Drive. And then the first of the formation of uh, a meeting in an upstairs building on, on Oakland Park. And then that move and then Andrews and then to... Uh, Equality um, uh, Park now, Pride Center at Equality Park. You think back in terms of your commitment in Wilton Manors and in the community, does it, and the development of Pride Center, does it give you pride in terms of your involvement in it? Wow, that's a good question. I, I, yeah, I, I guess it does. I never really thought about it. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's definitely cool to see it happen. As I don't know that I had that much of a forward vision way back then. You didn't think about what you were accomplishing? Is, what, is that what yeah, that means? Yeah, basically. I just yeah. thought, like, let's do something. You're just driving, step yeah. by step, one yeah. foot in front of the other. Yeah. Uh, one foot in front of the other uh, helps uh, develop the foundation of one of the most important community centers in America. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's Carol Moran. Well, thanks. <laughs> Um, it's true, Carol, and 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 it's what it's what brings us to diversity honors. There's this guy. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, um, Harvey Milk. Uh, yeah. He. Uh, <laughs> that the, guy. Yeah, that guy. In the 1970s. <laughs> he's done a few things. Right. He's done a few things, and uh, uh, a few things cut too short. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious first before we talk about Harvey Milk Foundation and diversity honors. If you were in San Francisco in the 1970s, how would Harvey Milk embrace? Carol Moran. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how he would. I know how I feel. I would embrace him. Be like, let's go. I'm on yeah, board. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Um, and if if Harvey Milk were alive today and and saw Wilton Manors, what do you think Harvey Milk would say about a place like South Florida generally and the LGBTQ oh. community and a, and Pride Center at Equality Park? I think he would be proud or he should be proud. Yeah. Yeah. Would blow his mind, I yeah. would think. Yeah. We have some artwork that has him quoted on Milton Drive. So that's pretty cool too. Yeah, that is. Yeah. All right. Diversity Honors is, uh, is a partnership with the Harvey Milk Foundation uh, and Harvey Milk Foundation uh, partners. Uh, It's a fundraising effort uh, for the foundation and Pride Center at Equality Park. It's coming up Saturday, April 1st, and uh, very exciting because it's at the Seminole Hard Rock um, Hotel in Hollywood. Uh, An amazing commitment on Seminole Hard Rock to be associated with LGBT, the Pride Center, awards in LGBT, to be embraced by a brand like the Seminole Tribe of Florida that owns all of the hard rocks in the world uh, to say, wait, LGBT is really, really important. And we want Harvey Milk Foundation here 
to celebrate the Pride Center at Equality. It speaks volumes. It speaks volumes for community. They hold this uh, event, and it's uh, a fundraising event. Um, and you can get tickets and learn more about it at diversityhonors.org. But interesting in terms of how you're embraced. You're one of the recipients. There's yes. a, it's an awards program you mentioned already. You're winning an award called, appropriately enough, the Pride Center at Equality Park Alan Schubert Award. Tell us, uh, tell us about Alan Schubert and the- Alan Schubert Diversity Award. Alan Schubert was a foundation. He was the vision. He's absolutely the vision of the GLCC. And then we changed it to GLCC SF, which is now Pride Center. Yeah. But he was a vision of it. He had this vision back in the early 90s and he, he committed to it. He, he sold artwork for it. He lived and breathed for this to happen. Mm. And why do you think he did that? I think he felt a need and saw a need. Yeah. And he knew there was a need. Yeah. And he knew there was a need beyond him. Yeah. And so this vision and the development, uh, um, I, I've already discussed your, uh, your involvement as a board president and the capital campaign uh, board chairman, uh, his vision in terms of wanting to see ultimately to the conclusion of Pride Center at Equality Park, which we've already established, Boys Town, the, the San Francisco Center, uh, the Los Angeles uh, Pride yep. Center. Pride Center at Equality Park sits in that prestigious Absolutely. shadow of giants in Absolutely. America for LGBT. Um, and that says that this is so important. And then along comes uh, the recipient of the award, Carol Moran. When you heard that news, what was the reaction? I, I, I was shocked, actually. <laughs> Why? I, you know, Robert. when Robert Booth called me, I thought he was kind of kidding because, you know, I, I take everything with a big grain of salt. Yeah. He's like, Carol, no. You, you, you've done the work, you've, yeah. you get it. Yeah. That's like, uh, does, it, cool. does it give you particular pride, where, as I said at the top of our interview, or uh, National Women's History Month, does it give you particular pride to win an award like this in such a prestigious forum as this, with Harvey Milk's name attached to oh, it? You're, <laughs> you're making it stressful. Uh, yeah, it is. You know, it's funny, I've been given awards, and, and Nancy, my wife, God bless her, she puts up with me. She's, she's part of the award as well. But, you know, for me, this one is 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 pretty prestigious. Yeah, it's pretty. Small. And I have to say, as a sidebar, my sister is actually impressed. Who's hard to impress? <laughs> she actually texted me and said, "You're getting an award along with a senator." Like shocked. So yeah. it's that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and and of course, Carol's talking about uh, Chev Jones, Senator Chev Jones. Yeah. Uh, who is also uh, being recognized? Uh, what are you looking most forward to? April first. At the award and getting the award presented. I, what am I most looking forward to? Mm -hmm. I just think the community coming together, some leaders, some more people being introduced, um, hopefully some guests that haven't really uh, dived into what the Pride Center is and for them to get on board with it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully a younger community seeing that we're at Hard Rock and we're visible and like what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. And if just one person that's hanging out by the pool and, and is, is out there, gets a vision of it, that'd be, mm -hmm. that would be great. I'm always curious at moments like this when we see the momentous history of Harvey Milk Foundation and Diversity Honors and Pride Center at Equality Park and the lesbian owner that uh, a long, long time ago saw the vision of the trailer park in central Broward <laughs> County. I keep po poking my friends at City I know, right? Uh, yeah, that trailer park. It's <laughs> funny because they, it's been built something spectacular. You, you're going to get this award April 1st. Uh, uh, what's next? You all done and say, okay, I'm finished. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's so sweet when people say, you know, congratulations. I just, you know, I go, oh my, that's sweet. You know, I, I, what's my next? I don't know. Just keep doing me, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I, uh, there's you're still a lot You're not quitting. Of, you're no. not, uh, there's still a lot of work to do in our community. Yeah. And there's a lot of work to do just politically for women's rights, reproductive rights. And I even said it the other day, to be honest. I, I said, we're getting tired. The younger generation, they got to get up and get on board. Yeah. Students got to get involved. Like, yeah. come on, we're rolling back Roe versus Wade. We're just... We're tired. I marched, I marched in, in uh, 93 on Washington. Square, you know what I mean? I, yeah. Come on, let's go. Yeah, 
It's We've time got to, more to do. Yeah, it's time to get rejuvenated. To that sounds very Harvey Milkish to me <laughs> in my ear. Uh, diversity honors. Carol Moran, congratulations Thank to you. Thank you. Um, I'll be there. Uh, I'll be uh, watching you accept your award. I assure you as you're getting that award. And uh, uh, I will be thinking about Women's History Month. And I will be thinking about the women's role in our traditionally very gay, male-oriented uh, LGBTQ communities, and uh, we we have to continue to concentrate on making the spaces and the seats available for our women because they helped us in AIDS, they helped found our human rights uh, march of LGBT, and they helped build the Pride Center at Equality Park. Those are all pretty good things. Ah, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's a great way. All right. Carol Moran, thank you very much thank for being you. with us. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all that you do. Yeah. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.